Peter Lorre was an Hungarian-American actor. Lorre began his stage career in Vienna, before moving to Germany where he worked first on the stage and then in film in Berlin in the late 1920s and early 1930s. Lorre caused an international sensation in the German film M in 1931, directed by Fritz Lang, in which he portrayed a serial killer who preys on little girls. Lorre was born Laszlo Lowenstein on 26th of June 1904 to Jewish-Hungarian parents. Laszlo's mother died when he was four years old, leaving his father with three very young sons, the youngest being several months old. He soon married his wife's best friend, Melanie Klein, to whom he had two more children. However, Laurie and his stepmother never got along, and this coloured his childhood memories. At the outbreak of the Second Balkan War in 1913, anticipating this would lead to larger conflict and he would be called up, Elagios moved the family to Vienna. He served on the Eastern Front during the winter of 1914 and 1915, before being put in charge of prison camps due to heart trouble. Laurie began acting on stage at the age of 17 in Vienna where he worked with the Viennese Art Nouveau artist and puppeteer Richard Teschner. He then moved to Germany, and later to Zurich. In the late 1920s, the actor moved to Berlin, where he worked with German playwright Bertolt Brecht, which saw him get a role in Brecht's Man ist Man, and as Dr Nakamura in the musical Happy End. The actor became much better known after director Fritz Lang cast him as child killer Hans Beckett in M in 1931, a film reputedly inspired by the Peter Curtin case. Lang said he had Laurie in mind while working on the script and did not give him a screen test because he was already convinced that Laurie was perfect for the part. Lang said that Laurie gave his best performance in M and it was among the most distinguished in film history. When the Nazis came to power in Germany in 1933, Laurie took refuge in Paris and then London, where he was noticed by Ivor Montague, associate producer for The Man Who Knew Too Much, who reminded the film's director Alfred Hitchcock about Laurie's performance in M. They first considered him to play the assassin in the film, but wanted to use him in a larger role despite his limited command of English at the time, which Laurie overcame by learning much of his part phonetically. After starring in two American films, Laurie returned to England to feature in Hitchcock's Secret Agent in 1936. Laurie and his first wife, Celia Lovsky, boarded a Cunard liner in Southampton on the 18th of July 1934 to sail for New York a day after shooting had been completed on The Man Who Knew Too Much, having gained visitors' visas to the United States. Laurie settled in Hollywood and was soon under the control of Columbia Pictures, which had difficulty finding parts suitable for him. After some months employed effectively for research, Laurie decided that Crime and Punishment, the 1866 Russian novel by Dostoevsky, would be a suitable project for himself in the central role. Columbia's head Harry Cohn agreed to make the film adaptation on the condition he could lend Laurie to Metro Goldwyn Mayer, possibly as a means of recouping the loss that Laurie had not appeared in any of the films so far. For MGM's Mad Love in 1935, set in Paris and directed by Karl Freund, Laurie's head was shaved for the role of Dr. Google, a demented surgeon. In the film, Google replaces the wrecked hands of a concert pianist with those of an executed knife-throwing murderer, an actress who works at the nearby Grand Guignol Theatre, who happened to be the pianist's wife, is the subject of Google's unwelcome infatuation. Laurie followed Mad Love with the lead role in Crime and Punishment, also in 1935. Returning from England after appearing in Hitchcock's second picture, Secret Agent, in 1936, he was offered and accepted a three-year contract with 20th Century Fox. Starring in a series of Mr. Moto movies, Laurie played John P. Marquand's character, a Japanese detective and spy. Initially positive about the films, he soon grew frustrated with them saying the role is childish. He twisted his shoulder during a stunt in Mr. Moto Takes Vacation in 1939, the penultimate entry of the series. 
In 1939, he attended a lunch at the request of some visiting Japanese officials. Laurie wore a badge that read Boycott Japanese Goods. In late 1938, Universal wanted to borrow Laurie from Fox for a role ultimately performed by Basil Rathbone in Son of Frankenstein. Laurie declined the role because he thought his menacing roles were now behind him, although he was ill at home at the time. He had tested successfully in 1937 for the role of Quasimodo in an aborted MGM version of The Hunchback of Notre Dame. By now, frustrated by broken promises from Fox, Laurie had managed to end his contract. After a brief period as freelance, he signed for two pictures at RKO in 1940. In the first of these, Laurie appeared as an anonymous lead in the B-picture Stranger on the Third Floor, reputedly the first film noir. The second RKO film was You'll Find Out, a musical comedy mystery which co-starred horror actors Bella Lugosi and Boris Karloff, as well as band leader Kay Kaiser. In 1941, Laurie became a naturalised citizen of the United States. Director John Huston effectively ended a period of decline for the actor and saved him from more B-movie pictures by casting him in the Maltese Falcon. Despite Warner Brothers being lukewarm about Laurie at first, Huston was keen for him to play Joel Cairo. Huston observed that Laurie had a clear combination of braininess and real innocence and sophistication. He said he's always doing two things at the same time, thinking one thing and saying something else. Laurie himself reminisced fondly in 1962 about the stock company he found working with Humphrey Bogart, Sidney Greenstreet and Claude Rains. The year after the Maltese Falcon, he portrayed the character Ugart in Casablanca. While Ugart is a small part, it is he who provides Rick with the letters of transit, the key plot device. Laurie made nine movies with Sidney Greenstreet, counting Maltese Falcon and Casablanca, in 1944, Laurie returned to comedy in the role of Dr. Einstein in Frank Capra's version of Arsenic and Old Lace. Writing in 1944, film critic Manny Farber described it as what was called Laurie's double-take job, a charismatic dramatic flourish where the actor's face changes rapidly from laughter, love, or a security that he doesn't really feel, to a face more sincerely menacing, fearful, and deadpan. Laurie's last film for Warner was The Beast with Five Fingers in 1946, a horror film which played a crazed astrologer who falls in love with a character played by Andrea King. After World War II and the end of his Warner contract, Laurie's acting career in Hollywood experienced a downturn, whereupon he concentrated on radio and stage work. In 1949, he filed for bankruptcy. In autumn 1950, he travelled to Germany to make the film noir De Vorlin, which Laurie co-wrote, directed and starred in. In February 1952, he returned to the United States, where he resumed appearances as a character actor in television and feature films, often portraying his creepy image. He was the first actor to play a James Bond villain when he portrayed Le Chiffre in a 1954 television adaptation of Ian Fleming's novel Casino Royale opposite Barry Nelson as an American James Bond referred to as Jimmy Bond. Laurie starred alongside Kirk Douglas and James Mason in 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea in 1954, around the same time. He appeared in NBC's espionage drama Five Fingers in 1959, starring David Hedison, in the episode Thin Ice, and in 1960 in Rawhide as Victor Laurier in The Incident and The Slave Master. In Laurie's last years, he worked with Roger Corman on several low-budget films, including two of the director's Edgar Allan Poe cycle, Tales of Terror in 1962 with Vincent Price and Basil Rathbone, and The Raven in 1963, again with Price, as well as Boris Karloff and Jack Nicholson. He again worked with Price, Carlos, and Rathbone in the Jacques Tournier-directed The Comedy of Terrors in 1963. Laurie was married three times, to Celia Lovsky between 1934 and 1945, Karen Verne, 1945-1950, and Anne-Marie Brenning, 1953-1964. to 1964. 
1953, Brenning bore his only child, Catherine. His daughter later made headlines after serial killer Kenneth Bianchi confessed to police investigators that he and his cousin had posed as undercover police officers, stopping her in 1977 with the intent of abduction and murder, but let her go on learning she was the daughter of Peter Lorre. It was only after Bianchi was arrested that Catherine realised whom she'd met. Catherine died of complications from diabetes in May 1985, age of 32. Laurie himself suffered years of chronic gallbladder troubles, for which doctors had prescribed morphine. Laurie became trapped between the constant pain and the addiction of morphine to ease the problem. It was during the period of the Mr. Moto movies that Laurie struggled with and overcame his addiction. Having quickly gained a hundred pound and not fully recovering from his addiction to morphine, Laurie suffered personal and career disappointments in his later life. He died in Los Angeles on 23rd of March, 1964, from a stroke. His body was cremated and his ashes were interned in the Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Hollywood. Vincent Price read the eulogy at his funeral.